Mm -hmm. like legally, you can't. Get I can't hear. Okay. I mean, I, can, I have hearing aids in, and I can hear some. So I'm gonna have you look at me. I know you probably can't see me. No, I, I can see. I'm deaf. What okay? Hi, hi. Guys, make it really loud for Vinnie Brown. Oh yeah. Yeah, you sound great. I am, uh, I'm a deaf man, I'm deaf. I wear hearing aids and, uh, and it's tough. I mean, hearing aids are good, but they don't fix everything. I was born deaf and uh, let me tell you about being deaf. It's the worst, it's the worst handicap to have because people do not care about deaf people. You all go out, you see someone blind. Oh, can I help you cross the street? You see someone in a wheelchair. Oh, make room for the wheelchair. You talk to deaf people, you're all the same. Why don't you listen? <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's the worst handicap to have. And, and I used to get very offended uh, by people the way they talk to me because they would insult me without realizing they were insulting me. Are you, are you stupid? <laughs> And there's no way you can't play the handicap. I yeah, the handicap things. If I park up front and get in my car and I'm skipping in, <laughs> people get pissed. what's wrong with you? <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You're a rude man. I'm deaf. That's not a real handicap. <laughs> I was like, I can't hear you. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> say what you say. Do whatever you gotta do. I didn't know how bad it was until I got hearing aids. I got hearing aids during the pandemic, and uh, this is what I found out when I got hearing aids. My family doesn't like me. <laughs> I never knew that. They've been talking shit about me forever. I had no idea. No idea. And then my wife knew that I started hearing things, and she started trying to control the girls. Like, shh. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm sitting home one day and they're out shopping and, and she comes in the door and I hear her say to the girls, careful girls, remember, he can hear now. <laughs> My wife, she's a beach person and you can't be a beach person and make me happy. It just is impossible. She's always so excited to go and I hate the beach. <laughs> I come home from a hard day at work, so I go, oh, get to bed. Get to bed early tonight. <laughs> I need you to get a good night's sleep because we're going to the beach tomorrow to relax. <laughs> you gotta get in bed immediately. I want you to get a good night's sleep because we're getting up at 4 a.m. so we can relax. <laughs> Already sounds so relaxing, thank you. This sounds awesome. I go to lift the cooler in the car, it's 847 pounds. She packed the cooler like we might not make it back home from the beach. Might be stuck there for a while. She's packed the whole family. She's got a case and a half of water. I brought tomatoes. I know you like tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes, and I'm always trying to not be sarcastic. Did you remember the fresh basil? I did! <laughs> I got garden fresh basil and tomatoes. <laughs> what else did you pack? Yogurt, oh, yogurt. <laughs> well, it is gonna be a party because everybody loves yogurt. Who hasn't laid around on the beach saying, hey, you got a yo play somewhere? <laughs> you got a yo play in there? <laughs> I go to the beach in New Jersey. Everybody loves a fresh yogurt <laughs> when you're on a Jersey beach. You feel that little aluminum off the top and the, the wind blows a fresh layer of sand. <laughs> right across your yo play. <laughs> Sand that's been on a Jersey beach co-mingling with used tampon applicators. <laughs> Just what I wanted. 
a crab flavored yogurt. <laughs> Get to the beach late now, there's no parking. Just drop me and the girls off. Just drop us off. <laughs> just, just drop us off and you go to the off site parking. <laughs> I gotta drive back to the mainland. 13 mile hike. Don't forget the cooler, bring the cooler. Now I gotta hike 13 miles. She forgot to pack both sneakers. I got one sneaker. Trying to find my way back to the beach. People are giving me money like I'm a homeless man. What do you got in the cooler, homeless boy? Then I get to the beach. I get to the beach like an hour after them and I'm all covered in sweat and I'm, I'm exhausted and I just want to complain to somebody. And I walk up and she's sitting there and I'm like, you're not gonna believe, quiet! <laughs> quiet, the girls are sleeping. We came to the beach to sleep under this gigantic sun tent so no one gets any sun on them. <laughs> we came here to sleep under us a sunshade tent. I'm sitting there going, hey, we were sleeping at four o'clock in the morning in a sun tent at home. I don't, I'm not a beach person. I don't like the beach. So many things that are wrong with the beach. People don't know how to act on the beach. I'll tell you the worst thing, men in flip flops. Let me tell you something. I am a grown man. I don't want to see another man's feet ever, ever. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen my own feet in 15 years. I remember looking at my feet 15 years ago and thinking, I never need to see that again. These feet are for walking and kicking ass. I Men's feet are nasty. We don't do nice things for our feet. I don't take care of my feet. Women, they get pedicures, I don't, <laughs> Anyone over 35 years old, your toenails are nasty. They're all thick and yellow, like pieces of stained glass of the church. I'm trying to have a yo play over here. I don't understand women letting their men wear flip flops. Such a such a bizarre thing. You, you take care of your man, then you go out with a guy wearing flip-flops. Just dangerous behavior. You can't go out with a guy wearing flip-flops. What if a fight breaks out? <laughs> that man can't defend you. He's gonna get his ass kicked. He'll spend the whole fight squeezing two toes together. <laughs> Focus and squeeze, try it! <laughs> uh, I can't stay, I'm so happy fall is here. I can't, I can't do it. There's a lot of things I can't do. I can't do Halloween. I don't like Halloween. <laughs> Dragging my children around, begging for candy. What kind of man? <laughs> can't afford a Snickers bar. <laughs> Come on, kids, we're gonna get you some candy because daddy's a loser. <laughs> I hate the beach and I hate Halloween. Halloween is not a man's holiday. Gotta take a day off and take my children around the neighborhood begging for stuff that I could afford to buy if I just didn't take a day off to drag them around begging for stuff. <laughs> Spend my whole parental career telling my children, don't go up to strangers, don't go up to strangers, <laughs> except on this one day. <laughs> this one day, strangers are fine. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna have you go up to strange people all day long. As long as you bring back a Reese's peanut butter cup for daddy. I don't care what happens. Good luck, little buckaroo. 
I hate Halloween. I hate. I don't like giving out candy. I don't like. I don't like kids in my neighborhood. To be frank with you, I got one kid in my neighborhood. Fat Bobby. That's what I call him. Fat Bobby. Fat. Bo I call him Fat Bobby because his name is Bobby and he's fat. And let me. 364 days a year, Bobby doesn't like me, and I don't like Bobby. And then one day a year, Bobby comes for free stuff. Rings my doorbell, trick or treat, Mr. Brand. Hey, Bobby, I don't like you even today. He's a nasty little kid. My wife's always be nice to Bobby on Halloween. No. I'm not going to be nice to Bobby on Halloween because I don't like him. I don't like anything about Halloween. Feel free to leave during my set. I don't like <laughs> There's nothing about it that I like. Kids coming up begging for candy. I don't like to stay home all day. As soon as I sit down, ding dong, ugh. <laughs> Got to get up and down. You know what I do? I put out a big bowl on my front porch. I put it out and I put it out empty, right from Jump Street. <laughs> it's empty the minute I put it out. <laughs> and I put a sign on there, take one and leave some. <laughs> leave some for everybody else. <laughs> and I gotta be honest with you, I've never put so much as a candy corn in that bowl. <laughs> I know kids come up to my door and they go, ah, look at that. <laughs> Mr. Brand tried to be a good guy, <laughs> but some SOB took all the candy on one shot. <laughs> you know what I find soulless in? You know what I find comfort in? That at least 95% of them go, I bet it was Fat Bobby. <laughs> makes me very happy. <laughs> now I'll tell you something about that joke. There's no kid in my neighborhood named Fat Bobby. I don't have a fat kid in my neighborhood. We have a very healthy neighborhood. I made Fat Bobby up. <laughs> I made him up, everybody. He doesn't exist, sir. But you know what the weird part is? When I do that joke, you know who gets upset? My wife. <laughs> My wife gets mad at me. She said to me one day, I don't like that joke. I said, why? She goes, you're shaming Bobby. <laughs> What'd you just say to me? She goes, you're fat shaming Bobby. <laughs> like Bobby doesn't exist. <laughs> I made Bobby up. <laughs> you know, she said to me, it doesn't matter. You're fat shaming Bobby. <laughs> And I don't like it. She was in the show one night, and I did that whole piece. And so I said, let me make my wife feel comfortable. Let me help Bobby out. And I said, hey, you know what, everybody? I saw Bobby, and he lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> Bobby looks fantastic. <laughs> and everybody clapped. I said, oh, but it's not all good. Guess what? Bobby died. <laughs> Turns out Bobby had cancer. <laughs> And I thought I fixed the whole thing. I thought that my wife would be happy with me because I didn't fat shame Bobby. <laughs> And after the show, she goes up and goes, oh, I don't care for it. <laughs> you killed fat Bobby. <laughs> I fat shamed and killed a fictional character <laughs> and upset my wife. I think the whole thing's a win. <laughs> you don't only really think that way if you're married. I am married, I'm a married man, and I'm happily married, young lady. Almost 25 years. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 25, and I gotta tell you something, I got kids, I got a lot of kids. I have six children, which is a lot of children to have, sir, and none of them, not one of them, is fat. Now the point I'm trying to... <laughs> 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 
I think my wife told all the kids, don't get fat, dad will put you in the act. <laughs> Here are my children's ages. I have one 36, 35, 33. I have one 22, 19, and 10. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Show a little respect for a man that has been getting laid for decades. Yes. You can't turn this off. This is 24 7. I wake up in the morning, put your cleats on, honey. This game is happening. I see a lot of you doing the math, trying to figure it out. Wait a minute. 36 and 10. I wonder if, hey, none of your business, Helium. As a matter of fact, it is the same wife. She had her first child when she was 12. I met her on Epstein Island. The point of... Obviously a joke. I didn't do that. I had two wives. I had three children with my first wife and three children with my second wife. Every woman I marry gets three babies. I'm nothing if I'm not fair, everybody. I feel bad doing that joke because here it is fall, here it is fall, and I do what I do every fall. I went to my ex-wife's grave and I cleaned away all the summer weeds and I planted some nice fall mums because despite our bitter, acrimonious divorce, she is the mother of my three oldest children and I respect my children by taking care of their mother's grave. That's the kind of man I am. Vinnie Brand is compassionate. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want you to feel bad because she's not dead yet. I just want to be ready. I just. I'm a planner for God's sake. I love my children. My youngest is 10 years old. The other day she said to me, Hey, you know what, Dad? I saw your one TikTok video, did 2 million views. You're famous, Dad. Then she said this, you know what, Dad? When you and Mom die, you'll be in the news. <laughs> and she was excited about it. So you'll be in the news. <laughs> and I said, honey, it's only one TikTok video. I don't think we'd be in the news unless we were maybe murdered. <laughs> and she goes, well, either way. <laughs> Sounds like you're desperate for me to be in the news, sweetheart. <laughs> I got a lot of kids. Now, I'll tell you something right now. You should be very, very cautious when you have children. A lot of people have children when they're very young. I had children when I was 22. That's the wrong age to have children. You should not have a baby. You gotta wait for a while. 65 is the right age. <laughs> 65 is the sweet spot for having a child. Some people think that's too late, but that's face facts, everybody. If you have a baby at 65, guess what? Saving for college is not your problem. <laughs> Daddy, I got an A on my exam. Who gives a crap? <laughs> Knock yourself out, sweetheart. <laughs> If you have a baby when you're young, you gotta be careful about your college expenses. If you have a baby when you're 23, you should introduce your child to pot as soon as possible. <laughs> Having a baby at 65 is perfect. 
Because you only get 15 good years out of a child before a child turns to crap. <laughs> Babies 15 years old, those are the hard years right there. Yeah. That's why you should have a baby at 65. Think about it. You're 80 years old. <laughs> Your kid goes south, you don't care. In fact, maybe you drop dead right in the kid's face. That's the ultimate guilt trip to lay on a child. Go ahead and have a last cupcake, cause daddy's dead. I hope you're happy. Maybe you don't die, maybe you just get a case of Alzheimer's, that works out. You got a 15-year-old kid yammering in your face. I hate you. You ruined my life. I can't stand you. I don't even know who the hell you are. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I just crapped my pants. <laughs> Change my diaper. <laughs> I love having children. I got a little farm in my house, sir. A little farm to keep the kids excited. I've got goats. Let me tell you something about goats. You want to have goats so you can entertain your children. One day, my little child, she had all her little play date friends over. About eight year olds, all these kids were out looking at the goats. And that day, I had another farmer bringing over a bull goat so he could make little baby goats for me. <laughs> I'm not a real farmer. I had no idea what to expect. I had all the girls out looking at the goats and this farmer comes in with this very prominent, shall we say, <laughs> male goat. I'm like, look children, here comes the daddy goat. <laughs> what I didn't know is that there's no time period for getting to know each other. <laughs> I thought for sure there would be a let's get acquainted phase. <laughs> but there is no such thing. And that male goat went in and he started working right away. <laughs> I'm there with a bunch of eight-year-old girls going, ah! <laughs> and guess what? You think goats would be quiet or discreet? No such luck. <laughs> Loud and nasty. <laughs> jumping from goat to goat like some type of Roman party. <laughs> Making all kinds of noise. I froze. I froze. I don't know if I was enjoying it or I just froze. But I didn't act right away. <laughs> And then finally, oh my God, I gotta get the kids out of here. How do you explain this to a bunch of parents? What'd you do on the play date? Well, first we had cookies. And then we walked the goat orgy. I said, so come on kids, let's get away from it. Let's go in the house, let's go. And these goats are making so much noise. This little girl, Megan, oh my God, they're making so much noise. Mr. Brand, why are they making so much noise? I don't know, if I knew that, I'd be very happy. I don't know what to say, I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know, Megan, I think, I think they're fighting. And then Megan goes, oh, my parents fight all the time. I love the fact that we're out here on a, on a, what is it, Friday night? I don't even know what night it is. I'm happy to see people out. <laughs> In one big room enjoying themselves post-pandemic. <laughs> yeah, the pandemic is over. And I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's all over, but it's coming back. It's coming back, everybody. <laughs> I know it's coming back. I've done the research, and believe me, you, I know what I'm talking about. It's coming back because there's an election in November, and...
I'm more frightened now than I ever was because of the monkey pox. The monkey pox is terrifying. <laughs> COVID never scared me. If you have COVID, you can go out and give that to people. <laughs> no one knew you had COVID. <laughs> oh, the monkey pox, they know right away you're covered in the pox. <laughs> COVID was sneaky. <laughs> if I just had one dime for everybody I gave COVID to. The monkey pox is scary. <laughs> I'm only joking, sir. I took the pandemic very seriously. I did all the right things. I got the vaccine. I got the booster. Then I got the virus. I... <laughs> I did it all right. <laughs> we did some dumb things during the pandemic. We did. I'll tell you the dumbest thing we did right up front. We closed everything but the Home Depot. <laughs> We're gonna keep open the essential businesses. <laughs> Home Depot's essential. <laughs> Let's face facts. If we're gonna die in a global pandemic, you might as well have a brand new deck on the way out. <laughs> May as well spruce up the household. <laughs> I like when they close down everything but the Home Depot. That's where I went for my entertainment. I went to meet people at the Home Depot. But you couldn't walk right in. There was a kid out front with a clicker. For the first two weeks, this kid's job was to save humanity. You go to walk in there, where do you think you're going, danger? They got 84 people in there buying hardscaping. Gotta wait till someone leaves before you can win there. <laughs> you couldn't just take a cart right away. You try and take a cart. Hold on, sir. <laughs> Gotta disinfect that cart. <laughs> then another 18-year-old kid with pimples and a mystery tank of fluid. <laughs> Wouldn't even aim at the cart. Just kind of give it a, <laughs> give it a one shot. You're safe now. <laughs> What'd you spray my cart with? Ah, uh, did you did you use Clorox? <laughs> now nah, the whole world out of Clorox. <laughs> There's a pandemic on. Would you use Lysol? No, nah, we ran out of Lysol. <laughs> What'd you put on the cart? Roundup. <laughs> no pandemic gonna kill you. You going the old fashioned way with cancer. Get on in there and get your, get your hands <laughs> I loved all the pandemic rules. The pandemic rules made me laugh. You can go in a restaurant as long as you have a mask on. Until you start eating. Once you start eating, you can take your mask off. Because that's when you're safe. When you're spitting your guacamole. <laughs> guacamole isn't a known carrier. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and spit your guacamole all over. Cause that's perfectly safe. <laughs> You can wear the mask all the way up until you were sitting down, sitting down. Because the COVID likes to hover right around five foot eight.
down here is a safe gun. I like the curfew. The curfew made a lot of sense. <laughs> 10 o'clock! 10 o'clock. We've done the research. This thing's nocturnal. <laughs> Comes out like a virus raccoon late at night. <laughs> I'll tell you the dumbest thing we did. Hands down, dumbest thing we did the drive-by birthday party. <laughs> oh. oh, what little 10-year-old hasn't dreamed about a drive-by birthday party? <laughs> Daddy, what you and mommy planned for my birthday party? Well, Timmy, <laughs> you're in luck, son. Mommy and Daddy have planned a traffic jam for you! <laughs> what? That's right, Timmy, a drive-by birthday party! There's gonna be cars for as far as you can see, son, and you're all gonna drive by and throw your presents into the weeds. <laughs> You'll be looking for Legos until you're 28. Oh, Daddy, this is too good to be true. <laughs> How long is my party gonna last, Daddy? Well, Timmy, you see that red light down the end of the street, son? Well, when that light turns green, your party's over. <laughs> Hurry up and hit the pinata, kid. <laughs> doing these jokes. I love doing them. You know what I love? I love looking at you, trying to figure out who you voted for. <laughs> Based on what joke you're laughing about. Oh. I like to look out and try and figure it out. But don't tell me, sir. Don't tell me. Never tell anyone who you voted for. That's a dangerous behavior right there. You tell someone who you're voting for, and they're either gonna love you or they're gonna hate you. There's no middle ground, sir. A lot of people try and figure out who I voted for. You have no idea what, a lot of people hear these jokes and say, well, you must be a Trump voter. Let me tell you something, sir. I take my vote very seriously. As a matter of fact, I voted for Joe Biden five times. Let me. <laughs> Six, but I ran out of time. <laughs> I don't tell anyone I voted for. No one knows. It's my business. Let me tell you something. You tell someone who you voted for, you're asking for trouble. And never ask someone. I asked a young girl one day, hey, who'd you vote for? This woman lost her mind. How dare you ask me who I voted for? Let me tell you something, mister. My vote is my business. Who the hell do you think you are asking me who I voted for? You nosy SOB. I, I was shocked. I'm like, ah, no, you tell me who do you think you are? And I'm like, ah, I'm your husband. I. <laughs> Just thought we'd chit chat over an English muffin. I love you guys. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, I don't mean to be pain in the ass. Is there a water egg in my hand on real quick? Grab yourself. All right, yeah, just so you know, whatever he brings back, I'm gonna ask him for something else. Yes. <laughs> just... You're a good man. There you are. Oh. Do you have room temperature? Oh no. That's I'm fucking around. <laughs> I'm a big bar buster. I'm very sorry. I don't know. I wish I could be respectful. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try and do something clean on the first show, and maybe second show be a little bit more, what I would call like a club set, uh, because it's a club, and I, that's the part of the doing stand-up that I always liked, was the ability to be very loose, 
and not over plan it. I hope that's a good enough answer. Maybe I should be more in depth. I plan on doing something that'll change the world. <laughs> I think it's gonna. <laughs> Generally speaking, the crowds here will let you play. And I like to play. I wanna have fun. I wanna have as much fun as they are. So I like the Philly crowd and I like the rooms. It's a great sounding room. They're right up with you. Like that density in a room, that's what makes it okay to laugh about something that may be inappropriate. Because if it's not dense, if there's more room, I can look around more readily. Where if you're tight, you almost can't see everybody. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's counterintuitive. Like if you're tight, you would think you wouldn't laugh, but no, it's the opposite. So to me, a tight room, lower ceilings, right up on the stage, so I can be with the people there. That's what I like. You know, it's been 32 years, and I think that people should start really, you know, demanding that I come to your city. <laughs> yeah, I had kids at a very young age, I had kids at 22, so I was always wanted to be home. And, uh, and I built a club in order to be home. And now, at uh, 41 years old, I feel like I want to focus on performing now. So this is kind of fun for me, right? And it's interesting to me. It's also interesting that I have this opportunity to tape tonight and I haven't taken it as seriously as I should have. <laughs>